फाइंड द परसेंटेज एरर इन काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ अ बॉडी हैविंग मास 60 प्लस और माइनस 0.3 ग्राम मूविंग विथ अ वेलोसिटी 25 प्लस और माइनस 0.1 सेंटीमीटर पर सेकंड द प्रॉब्लम हियर रिटन ऑन द बोर्ड इज बेस्ड ऑन द एरर एंड हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द परसेंटेज एरर in the measurement here we will see step by step find find the percentage error in kinetic energy of a body having mass 60 plus or minus 0.3 gram moving with a velocity 25 plus or minus 0.1 centimeter per second one thing that you have to remember here, both the quantities are given in CGS units. Therefore, there is no need of conversion here. And to solve this problem, it is it becomes necessary to know the formula for the kinetic energy of a moving body. The kinetic energy of a moving body is given by kinetic energy is equal to half of m into v square where m is the mass of a body moving with a velocity v kinetic energy is the energy possessed by an object on account of its motion and therefore the kinetic is energy is related to the mass and the velocity of the moving body here we have to find out the percentage error in the kinetic energy of a moving body. Therefore, the change of kinetic energy per unit, the kinetic energy is equal to half is a constant. It has nothing to do with the error. The measurable quantity is the mass. Therefore, it is uh, dm divided by m plus 2 into dv divided by v. Now this is the relative error in the measurement of mass and this is the relative error in the measurement of velocity and factor 2 comes for the square. The relative error in mass plus relative error in velocity factor 2 comes for the power into 100 this will give the percentage error in the measurement of the kinetic energy. Here we know that the possible maximum error in the measurement of a mass is 0.3 of which the true value is 60 plus 2 into the possible error in the measurement of velocity is 0.1 and the actual value is 25 into 100. This is the percentage error. How to find out the percentage error? in the measurement of kinetic energy and it comes out to be equal to for the sake of convenience i will take 100 inside therefore it is 0.3 into 100 obviously it will be 30 divided by 60 plus it's 0 0.2 divided into 100 0.2 into 100 it is 20 divided by 25 and it comes out to be equal to 0 0.5 plus uh, 25 eggs are 200 and therefore it is 0.8 and the percentage error comes out, comes out to be equal to uh, it should be equal to 1.3 percent now the kinetic energy the percentage kinetic energy uh, here we are taking percentage from the start itself therefore into 100 and it it comes out to be equal to you know, the percentage error in the kinetic energy it comes out to be equal to uh, 1.3 percent 1.3 percent mm. here we get the answer in ohm's experiment the value of the unknown resistances were found to be 6.12 ohm, 6.09 ohm, 6.22 ohm, 
6.15 ohm calculate the absolute error relative error and percentage error in these measurements well uh, this is one more which is based on how to determine the percentage error in the measurement of physical quantity here the stream of the numerical what it says that we will see first and then we will go for the solution of the same now uh, in ohms experiment the values of unknown resistance were found to be 6.12 cm uh, ohm 6.09 ohm 6.22 ohm and 6.15 ohm in ohms experiment four observations are taken in order to determine the resistance of a given wire or the resistance that is given to you unknown resistance that is given to you from the four values you have to determine first which one is the most probable value of the measurement the most probable value is supposed to be the true value of the measurement or the real value of the measurement and uh, the true value or the real value of the measurement is nothing but the mean value of the measurement at the first we will find out the mean value of the measurement that we have taken here the uh, our mean i will treat it as a the most probable value of the measurement and it is equal to uh, it should be r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus r4 divided by 4 and it comes out to be equal to 6.12 plus 6.09 plus 6.22 plus 6.15 these are the four values of the resistance that are measured here is equal to we will find out the sum of all divided by 4 to determine the average one uh, that is 5 plus 2 7 plus 9 16 plus 2 18 18 carried 1 1 plus 1 2 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 1 5 then next 6 plus 6 12 plus 6 18 plus 6 24 it is 24 point 580 divided by 4 therefore it should be equal to it should be equal to uh, 4 6 are 24 4 ones are 4 4 4 are 16 and that is 6.14 6.14 ohm we have taken it here uh, with a significant figures 3 here Again, we have, uh, here everywhere you will get that the significant figures in the measurement are 3. Therefore, average we will take as uh, the with a significant figure 3. Uh, the next come out to be a 5 and in that case we will take it as uh, the smaller value or the earlier value 6.14 ohm. Uh, next, uh, now we will find the absolute error in every measurement and the average of all the absolute errors therefore uh, the absolute error we are going to treat it as a delta and this delta r mean uh, average error in the measurement of each uh, this is the mean value that we have determined and uh, this mean and the real uh, measured value the difference of the two that will give you uh, the absolute error in each measurement. The uh, mean value is 6.14 and mostly the kimmat is 6.12. Ya do khan madla farak ha absolute error hai. Asa pratte ka cha absolute error cha average kada hai cha. Tar apan waiver karta na ek ek step karayla harkat ni. Pan borda cha mariyada bagun. Apan he simultaneously karta hai. That is 6.14 and 6.12 the difference of the two will be 0 0.02 uh, 6.05 and uh, 0 0.9 and 6.14 uh, the difference come to, comes out to be equal to 0 0.05 uh, 6.22 and 6.14 the difference comes out to be equal to 0 0.08 and uh, 6.15 and 6.14 the difference comes out to be equal to 0 0.01 divided by 4. Uh, uh, these are uh, the four 
absolute errors error absolute error in the measurement of one measurement of two measurement of three measurement of four observations now we will see uh, what this uh, average absolute error here the average absolute here is uh, 1 plus 8 9 9 plus 5 uh, 14 plus 2 16 therefore it is uh, 0.16 divided by 4 and it comes out to be equal to 0 0.04 oh uh, the average absolute error in the measurement is 0.04 ohm next now with the average absolute error and the average value of the measurement uh, we can find out the relative error in the measurement and the relative error in the measurement will be uh, relative error we will find out uh, this will be uh, the average absolute error uh, divided by average absolute divided by uh, the average value of resistance uh, average absolute error uh, just we find out what uh, is equal to uh, 0 0.04 divided by 6.14 and uh, it comes out to be equal to uh, it comes out to be equal to uh, 0 0.0065 uh, this is the relative error in the measurement uh, dear friend, relative error is the uh, ratio of two singular quantities. Therefore, uh, there need not be a unit for this one. Hey, uh, bhagare, verbal resistance and khalipan resistance. And don resistance sa gunottar pramana asla mule sarkha quantity cha ratios la unit asat nai. Mona apni yala unit lit nai. The percentage error in the measurement. I will write this as. Uh, the percentage error uh, percentage error uh, that is uh, error relative error which is expressed in percentage uh, is called as the percentage error here this is relative error which is expressed in percentage relative error which is expressed in percentage is uh, the percentage error therefore it is 0. 0.0065 into 100 and it should be uh, 0 0.65 again uh, it is uh, a relative quantity therefore it should not have a unit therefore the percentage error in the measurement of resistance is uh, 0 0.65 percent uh, smaller is the value of percentage error uh, more is supposed to be the accuracy in the measurement of physical quantity. Now we will go for the next. An object is falling freely under gravitational force. Its velocity after traveling a distance h is v. If v depends upon the gravitational acceleration g and distance, Prove with dimensional analysis that V is equal to K under root of G into H where K is a constant. Dear friend, this is the numerical based on the uses of dimensional analysis. We know that dimensional analysis is used to derive the relation between two, phys two physical quantities. Here, we will read the numerical first and then we are going to solve this. What is written here? An object is falling freely under gravitational force. Any object which is uh, released from a height, it used to come down with a gravitational force or because of a gravitational force of attraction. When it is coming down, it is acted by a gravitational force and the gravitational force used to give uh, acceleration to the body and because of that uh, the body uh, comes down with increasing velocity uh, its velocity after traveling a distance h is v uh, when the body is falling down after covering a distance of h uh, it will attain a velocity which is equal to v 
uh, at the start when it is released its velocity will be zero and when it is coming down its velocity goes on increasing because of acceleration which is provided by a gravitational force you know if we depends on the gravitational acceleration very obvious what i have said when it is falling down a gravitational force act on it and it will give a acceleration the acceleration given by gravitational force is the gravitational acceleration which is represented by g uh, and uh, the value of velocity depends on the gravitational acceleration and from the height from which it is allowed to fall free uh, then using dimensional analysis we have to prove this formula the job is again a very simple one uh, i will write this uh, let this velocity no uh, v uh, depends on some constant of proportionality k the acceleration due to gravity g uh, raised to x and the height raised to y and uh, to determine uh, the formula for um, the velocity what we have to do is that we have to find out the value of x and y and there is a limitation that we are not able to find out the constant k using in the dimensional analysis aplela v c d formula karayla kay far karave lagnar nahi to apan v chi kimmat g var avlambun hai mhanun g raised to x v chi kimmat h var avlambun hai mhanun h raised to y ani dimension cha madatini aplela x ani y cha kimti mahit chala ki formula mahit hoil grave dimensional analysis hi maryada hai ki to k chi kimmat dimensional analysis ne nahi kadta hai तो अपन के बाजूला सोड़ू मैं बाकी फॉर्म्यूला कसा डिराइव करता द डायमेंशन ऑफ द वी आई विल राइट दिस एज द डायमेंशन ऑफ वी वी विल लिव के बिकॉज इट इज डायमेंशन लेस एंड इट्स वैल्यू कैन नॉट बी फाउंड आउट विद द हेल्प ऑफ द डायमेंशनल एनालिस एंड जी रेज टू एक्स वेर जी इज एक्सलेशन ड्यू टू ग्रैविटी एंड एच रेज टू वाई Uh, dimensions of velocity. Velocity is the displacement per unit time. Unit of velocity is meter per second. Uh, for meter, uh, it's a unit of length, and for second, it is the unit of time. But per second means it's in the denominator. Therefore, I will write it as L one and T minus one. Now, uh, then uh, G is acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is what. it's again an acceleration and what acceleration is rate of change of velocity it's a velocity uh, change of velocity per unit time and the velocity has the dimensions l1 and t minus 1 per unit time again divided by 2 and therefore the dimensions of acceleration are uh, t1 l1 and t minus 2 uh, raised to x uh, because the Uh, acceleration has a unit of meter per second square meter is the unit of length and per second square uh, uh, second is the unit of time uh, and it's in the denominator therefore it should be t to the power minus 2 and then uh, height uh, height simply measured in meter and therefore it's a unit of length and there is nothing to do with mass and time while measuring the Uh, height therefore uh, m0 and t0 uh, need not to write that therefore um, i will write this as um, l raised to 1 t raised to minus 1 then uh, it will be uh, l raised to x uh, t raised to minus 2x and l raised to y here uh, it's a very simple thing that we have done here and from that i will write here Uh, L raised to one and T raised to minus one is equal to uh, L raised to x plus y and T raised to minus of two x. Now uh, see uh, the left hand side and uh, right hand side of the equation. Now uh, from this, uh, what you will see that uh, uh, minus T raised to minus two x and T raised to minus one. Therefore. At the first, I will write this minus two x should be equal to minus of one, and hence 
x is equal to 1 by 2. This is one thing that we will get. Now here, t raised to minus 2, x and t raised to minus 1. Therefore, uh, by comparing these two, you will get minus 2x is equal to minus 1. Therefore, x is equal to 1 by 2. And l raised to x, x plus y is l raised to 1. Therefore, next I will get x plus y is equal to 1. Therefore, x is equal to 2, 1 by 2. I will keep uh, from the previous step. And hence, I will get y is equal to again 1 minus 1 by 2. That is equal to 1 by 2. Uh, like this, uh, knowing the values of x and y, I will write the equation for the velocity and the equation for the velocity comes out to be equal to v is equal to some constant k. Then acceleration due to gravity g raised to x, x is actually 1 by 2 and uh, h raised to y, y is also 1 by 2. Therefore, uh, the formula we will get for the velocity is uh, v is equal to k, uh, g raised to half and h raised to 1 by 2. And finally, uh, in a very simple manner where we can write this as v is equal to k um, under root of uh, g into uh, h. Uh, this is the formula that we derived from the dimensional analysis. I hope uh, you might have followed this one. It's a simple method to derive any formula using dimensional analysis. Thank you very much.